Welcome to TechTali.org video tutorial. Welcome to the video series Ruby for Java Programmers. The objective of this video is to help experienced Java programmers to learn Ruby. This video covers strings, numbers, classes, and objects at a very high level. In future, we will come up with detailed videos for each of these topics. Let us start with a Hello World program in Java. We use system.out.println to print the string with the form feed. To avoid the new line, print must be used instead of print lane. Let us now see how this Hello World program can be written in Ruby. Create a new file and write the code put as Hello World. Save the file with a name, say a.rb. Execute the file using the command ruby a.rb. Like Java, put s will print the string with a new line. To prevent the new line, use print function. In Java, double quotes is used to represent a string. In Ruby, both single as well as double quotes can be used to represent a string. In the case of single quotes, Ruby will print the string as it is, without any evaluation. Double quotes must be used if we want to evaluate the expression in the string, before printing it. Following example illustrates this. Ruby has an efficient string interpolation operator and it is recommended to use it. We can also concatenate strings using plus operator, but it is not efficient and error prone. Let us see more on this on next slide. Following is an example which demonstrates how to concatenate string using interpolation operator and using plus. It is always recommended to use string interpolation operator for string concatenation. The string concatenation using plus symbol will result in type error, if the variable is not a valid string object. In the following example, id is numeric type and when we try to concatenate it with a string, we will get a type error. Let us see the flexibility in Ruby when invoking method calls. In Ruby it is not mandatory to use parentheses around function parameters. Here are some of the various ways to invoke a method. The following example demonstrates how we can read a string input from a console in Java. System.in is used for this purpose in Java. Now let us see how the same can be achieved in Ruby. Ruby uses gets method to read a string from console. This slide compares how comments are used in Java and Ruby. In Java, we do have single line comment and multi line comments. Ruby also supports single and multi line comments. However, multi line comments are not popular and has a distinct syntax. This slide quickly covers how we can convert a string object to a float. The toF method, in this example, will return 0.0, .0 in case it fails to convert. So use it carefully. In Java, such methods will result in exceptions, which is a more sensible behavior. In this section let us see how to write a simple if condition in Ruby. Please review the syntax. Then is not mandatory if n is in a new line. That means then is mandatory if n is also in the same line. Please note that n is always mandatory in the if condition. Let us quickly look at Ruby variables. Like any language, it has got local variables. Ruby also has got global variables. In this example, id is a local variable. Count is a global variable. Local variables are represented in lower case. Global variables are prefixed with dollar sign. Let us summarize what we understood about Ruby variables from previous slide. Local variables has local scope and they are represented in lower case. Local variables can share the same name in different scopes. In the previous example there are two variables with the same name id. Global variables are prefixed with dollar sign. When a variable is unassigned it will print nil. Ruby does not impose an explicit return statement as in Java. If no return statement is specified, last evaluated value will be returned. Ruby is a pure object oriented language. Almost everything in Ruby is an object. Even plus and minus sign are objects in Ruby. Equal symbol is not an object and it is the only exception. To create a new instance of a class, use the new operator. 
the instance variable of a class has a prefix at. The format of a class is class class name and it terminates with an n keyword. Let us see some of the features of Ruby as an object-oriented language. The data hiding is not rigorously enforced. Initialize method will act as constructor if it is defined in a class. To print a string version of a class, use the function to s function. Like in Java, Ruby also has a built-in automatic garbage collection feature. Every Ruby object has an inspect method, which returns a human-readable string representation of the object. Ruby also has a p method which is shortcut for inspect method. The following example demonstrates the use of inspect and p methods. If a class file contains code, which are not part of the class, then it will be added to be a part of the main object. The following example prints object name as main, when printed from outside the class. Let us summarize the important points that we have covered in this video. Ruby is case sensitive. Parenthesis is optional. For string to be evaluated, use double quotes with string interpolation operator. Use double quotes to print any non-printing characters. Ruby is purely object-oriented. Thank you for watching this video. Please share it if you find it useful.